Hey everyone and welcome to Sasquatch Theory. In today's episode we are exploring the unknown once again and we have Everett from Connecticut on as our guest. Everett has followed the channel for quite some time now and he has really been wanting to um, tell me his encounters. Everett feels the cryptid phenomenon is connected to otherworldly beings such as aliens. He also believes that once you experience one thing in your life, you are very likely to experience more. If you enjoy Sasquatch Theory, please like and subscribe. And if you have a Bigfoot encounter or anything paranormal that is related to Sasquatch, please contact me sometime. Alright guys, let's get straight into Everett's encounters with the unknown. Everett, welcome to Sasquatch Theory. How are you doing today, sir? Oh, I'm doing great, Miguel. Thank you. Good to hear. Everett, if you would dive into your Bigfoot, cryptid, and paranormal encounters from the very beginning, and let's run through them all. Well, it's kind of a long story. I'm 55 years old. I'm in Connecticut. I'm prior military combat veteran. I like to say I have some integrity. I like to think I have integrity. Definitely am an honest person, maybe to the point of almost too honest. That could be a negative thing. But anyway, I uh, I had a Sasquatch encounter approximately 10 to 12 years ago. I'd have to do the math. But anyway, it's neither here or there. It was in Lisbon, Connecticut, and I had been coming from Providence. And I was on my way to pick my daughter up in Lisbon. She was at a friend's house. It was about eight o'clock at night, summertime, sort of getting dark. It was pretty dark. At least the area I was in, it was getting dark, being that it was wooded. And my wife and I, we were coming from Providence, like I said, took the back roads back. And uh, we were about 15 minutes from this, my uh, daughter's friend's house. So we were like, we were going to get there early. So we, I was driving very slow just to make, just to like kill time. I didn't want to get there too early. And again, like I said, it was summer. I had the window down. I was hanging my head out the window as I drove. And I'm going through Lisbon near the town dump in Lisbon, Connecticut. And it was a dead straight road. It's about a half a mile long, something like that. And it comes to an intersection. Anyway, uh, I had my head hanging out the window, and I was thinking to myself, wow, what a beautiful night. I wish I was on my motorcycle, you know, and I was just kind of like in a daze. And all of a sudden, I look, and I see two huge, and I mean like big as ping pong balls, sized eyeballs glowing. And they were, I would say, seven to eight feet tall. Definitely higher than like a stop sign. And uh, I look over at my wife and I said to her, you seeing this? Are you seeing this? And she couldn't believe it. And as I'm looking at her, she's leaning forward and she says, all I can see is the eyes. And they were like mesmerizing. And I'm like, I hear you. I hear you. It was so, they were like paralyzing the eyeballs. And they were glowing like an orange red color, perfectly round. But this son of a gun was standing there on the left side of the road. I'm on the driver's side, so I'm looking right at this thing. It did not decide to move until we got about 20 feet from it, maybe 15 feet. We were on top of it, basically. I'm going about 20 miles an hour, very, very slow. And I had the headlights on. This thing had, I'm on a dead straight road. It had to have seen the car coming for a long time. And I've always sworn to myself, this thing wanted us to see it. There's no other explanation. It had to have seen the headlights coming down the road. If you're standing on the side of the road, dead straight road, come on now. And the weird thing is, is I didn't know it until the day after that there were railroad tracks behind that thing in the woods, about 60 feet. 
It goes up into a berm and it goes down and sure as hell there's railroad tracks. And again, there's there uh is also the town landfill right there as I go by on my right side. So I'm thinking like, wow. I didn't think about it right away, but I went home. I did pick my daughter up, brought my wife and daughter home. And I said, I'm going back. You want to go? My wife's like, you're crazy. Matter of fact, when we saw this thing, I got to backtrack a little bit. When we saw this thing, I literally tried. I steered right at it. It it, it looked like it, it. It's so hard to explain. It looked like it took a right, like a sidestep to its right. And like it almost looked, it looked to me like it disappeared into thin air. Honestly, and I don't like. You know, I'm not, I'm not embellishing anything. I mean this. When this thing, it looked like it took two steps to the right, and it looked like it literally disappeared into thin air. There was nowhere for it to go. I swerved the truck right at this thing, and it was gone. I don't see how it could have disappeared that quick if it was running. I don't. I don't know. All I know is as I took I took the left and veered towards it, my wife was screaming, screaming bloody murder. And and I, I, what could I do? I, I just I didn't know what to do. I just couldn't believe what was happening. Anyway, I got back on the road, picked my kid up and brought them home. And I went back myself. Poking around, shining a light in the woods. I was scratching my head like I couldn't believe this happened. And I called a friend of mine, this guy Tony. It was in Jewett City, Connecticut, not far from Lisbon, next town over. And uh, we went out that night hunting around and we didn't see anything, you know. I went back the next morning and that's when I realized it was railroad tracks in the woods. And then obviously I knew the dump was there. So the weird thing is, is I went to work the next day after this happened. Uh, and I was telling everybody, I worked at Foxwoods Casino here in Connecticut. I was a custom carpenter there for like 15 years. And uh, I started telling everybody and anybody. And people, some laughed, some didn't. And uh, I didn't care. I, mean, I really don't care to this day who believed me or didn't, you know. But one of my co-workers in my shop, another carpenter friend of mine, the next day after that, so two days after the sighting, he brought in a flyer, like a, a town. The town, the town is called Sprague, but it makes up three three different areas. One's Versailles, Ockham, and then some other town. I forget offhand, no point. But anyway, they put out a monthly flyer. The town does. And they send it to everybody and anybody it comes in the mail. Told you about, you know, the goings on, town meetings and events and what's not. And on the back page of that flyer, it said point blank, has anybody seen Sasquatch in Lisbon? I couldn't believe it. And then it said, please call this number. I said, holy mackerel, I'm not the only one that saw this thing. You know, somebody else saw it. It was so I felt such gratitude because. I was going insane, like, this can't be real. I mean, I was one of those people that, at that time, I didn't realize they were, like, all over the country, down south, North Carolina, Missouri, your way. I didn't know that. I just, I was one of those people that thought they were out in the Northwest, and that's where they stayed. I had no idea. You know, and, and you know, it, it just blew my mind. So, yeah, that was to me confirmation that I, you know, I I did see something. I didn't know what it was, but I did see something. Uh, it was very difficult to make out the features because it was it was standing on the left side of the road, but it was against the woods. And honestly, when you're looking at this thing, the eyes it literally paralyzed you. It it was like. It was unbelievable. You couldn't, you couldn't take your eyes off, off this, off its eyes. So, trying to distinguish all these features would have been almost impossible. It was absolute paralysis. Although, you know, looking back on it, I, um, I don't think if I was able to take my eyes off its eyes, 
I don't think I would have saw much of anything anyway because it was like darkness against darkness. It blended in so well. It was incredible. It was absolutely incredible. And now, like I said, I've done a little homework, looked into this, and again, since since that happened, I know of at least three sightings in that same exact area. And it, it, keeps, it just keeps getting reported. There's houses around, but they're like, I don't know, I would say a quarter mile apart. Pretty much in the woods. You know, Lisbon, the town of Lisbon, the landfill there, I believe that thing goes in there at night and just forages. It can either forage for food or pick off animals that are foraging for food, one or the other. But I believe that's where it was either coming or going from. I have a feeling it was going that direction because it was at least it was facing that direction, heading towards the landfill, which was only about not even a quarter mile up the street, not even a couple tenths of a mile. It's very, very strange. But I, uh, it's just one of those things I'll never forget. But, uh, I don't know if you're interested or not, but I could tell you some things as far as like the UFOs. And a lot of people don't think like I firmly believe these things are directly related as far as UFOs go. I've got my reasons, but I, I firmly believe that that they are some they're they're definitely affiliated. I don't there's there's a few stories I've heard over the years that seem to correlate. Um, which lead me to believe, you know, what I'm saying. I, uh, I've dealt with the UFOs. I've dealt with, it's, it's very strange. Like I, uh, I had said to you in the past, when you deal with one weird thing, it just seems that other weird things seem to stack up on top of that. And I've never looked for anything. I've never played with Ouija boards. I've never looked, you know, for any kind of trouble. But it just seems that it just finds you. And once you experience one weird thing, you may as well expect more weird stuff because that's just the way it's going to be. I was just so happy that my wife was with me. You know, it scared the living hell out of her. If I was alone, I would have thought I was crazy. I would have thought I was crazy. I've never witnessed anything like that in my life. I witnessed some weird things, but that Sasquatch there in Connecticut... And I'm not the only one. They've been they've been spotted in Litchfield County, up towards Hartford area. You know, people don't understand that New England is 65 percent or more wooded. That's a lot of woods. You got these little towns. You know, if you go fly over New England, unless you're in Providence, Boston, or something like that. But for the most part, you could hide anywhere. People are like, oh, it's impossible. It would oh they would be spotted and all this. Are you crazy? Come on. I could get through the woods and get out and about. I could poke through your yard, look through your windows, and do whatever the hell I wanted. And you'd never find me if I didn't want you to. And I'm just an ex-army guy. You imagine something that's adapted to the woods that could sneak and peek and do whatever they want and go unseen for literally forever, man. People are so gullible to think that. They have one over on these creatures. It's it's ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. And I do believe, maybe not Hawaii, but they are in every state. I don't know about Hawaii. I've never heard any reports, but they are everywhere. Here in Rhode Island, Hockamock Swamp. I went out not long back on a little bit of an expedition with this uh, with, uh, this woman, Norma, and her husband. And uh, we were out there way out in Massachusetts. I mean, way out. Not We were in Connecticut, actually, but we were way out in the middle of nowhere on private property. And we were up there 10, 15 minutes and rocks started getting smashed together. We had look, those K2s, or whatever they call it. I don't know. It was their equipment. I don't even know. But microphone, the high, high sensitivity. You could hear every little thing, and you could hear rocks getting cracked together, and it was so obvious something was out there. It was it was beyond obvious. It was it was actually creepy because I had my window down. It was as if I felt like something was going to grab me out of the window, <laughs> out of the car, and just rip me out and drag me in the woods. I was getting kind of scared. It took about an hour to settle down to get used to it. And we were out there about well from like midnight till 
four or five in the morning. And yeah, there was all sorts of activity going on out there. And they've had serious, they've got serious, uh, I guess, proof, footage, whatever you want to call it. So yeah, we were out an area on private property on a lake. They had been there several times, friend of theirs that owns it. And uh, yeah, there was all sorts of crap going on. It didn't take, like I said, 10, 15 minutes max. And uh, yeah, next thing you know, you hear all sorts of craziness. You know, I think raccoons out there banging rocks together and whatnot. You know, come on. You got to have a couple hands to be doing a lot of this stuff. So now I don't consider myself gullible. I know, you know, I'm 55 years old. You know, I just look at it like it is what it is. You either, come on, I'm not one to lie to myself either. So anyway, yeah. I, uh, but, you know, along with that, like I say, uh, when I talked to you before, the UFO subject, that seems to, I don't understand why or how, but it just seems to, like, they actually seem to follow me around, man. I know that sounds ridiculous, but they know where I'm at. And I actually told my wife, I'm like, I think I've got a chip in me somewhere. And I said it jokingly, but I didn't. I wasn't joking. I've been dealing with this stuff forever. Since as long back as I can remember, five years old or so, you know, I just, I remember seeing my first UFO as a little kid on a skateboard in Norwich, Connecticut, looking up, and there's this disc, you know, hovering over my head. It was, it was a bunch of kids, you know, and uh, it just fluttered like a dragonfly, left and right. It was a typical disc. It was right over my, uh, my uncle had an aunt. She was like 80-something years old. This is in the 70s. It was above her house, man. And uh, it was there, just looking right at us. And then just shot away, like a, like, like a bullet, more or less. And uh, I didn't need no more convincing from there on out. I've always, uh, I, not only did I believe, I knew. I didn't need no believing. The believing part was over. And since that time, I would say every three to five years, I have some sort of encounter. I uh, I went on from that. And I've never seen the same type of disc, or the same type of UFO twice. I've never seen the same one twice. It's always a different craft. I'm going to tell you something that's very hard to believe. Well, actually, let me just hold off a second. I uh, I had the encounter when I was 14 with a gray in my room. I had been sleeping full sound asleep, woke up for no reason, rolled off onto my back, and there was this gray looking right at me, less than 12 inches away. And uh, I, I wasn't scared at first, but I started to get more and more scared because it, it was so bizarre. This thing was like in a praying position with its hands on the mattress. Its its hands, I mean, its arms on the mattress. Its hands weren't like praying or anything like that, but it was just resting its arms on the mattress, looking dead at my face. And it 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 spoke to me telepathically. I don't know what to say. It's the truth. And all I remember it saying was, "Go to sleep. Go back to sleep." And that was it. And I remember distinctly rolling back over to the position I was originally and doing exactly what it told me. And that's not like me. I'm a kind of a, I wouldn't say combative, but, you know, I'm the type of person, so, you know, if you tell me to take a right, I'm going to take a left. So this thing had total control over me, even without me being aware of it. And that's all I remember of that encounter. But I will say, at 55 years old, it's as clear now as is the day it happened. Can you it's describe never left me? Can you describe what the being looked yeah, like? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can exactly describe it. Well, all I saw was from like it's the center of its chest up. It had very, very skinny arms. I would say like real skinny. Like I would say maybe twice around is a broomstick. And uh, fingers, the fingers were like at least twice as long as yours or mine, at least. And it was, you got to realize in my bedroom, there was a street light out there. So I could somewhat see 
pretty well in that room, even though the lights were out. And this thing's eyes were black, black, black. And they were huge. They were, as, man, I'm breathing heavy just trying to tell you the story. The thing looked almost, well, they call them grays for a reason. This thing was basically gray, almost like a blue gray. And uh, it didn't do anything to, like, scare me, except for the fact of what it was looking at it. But see, I don't, I believe those eyes were, you see these grays, they have these huge black eyes. I believe these eyes, the, the blackness you see, I think those are like sunglasses type thing where they can take them in and out. And I don't know why, but I think underneath that shows what the real eyes look like. I think what I believe firmly, that's why you have all these cattle mutilations because their eyes are, I think they're making these things. I don't know how to say that without sounding crazy, but these grays, I think, are made somewhere, somehow, and I think that has to do with a lot to do with the cattle mutilations. I think if you were to peel back that lens, which is the blackness of their eyes, I believe you'd see underneath their eyes the size of a cow. If you look it up, and you look at the chromosomes of a cow, they're very, very similar to human, and uh, hence cattle mutilations. You said that it threw up a hologram of your brother? Oh, yeah. As I, I started to freak out. This thing was like so close to my face, and it sort of inched a little bit closer and closer. I think that had to do with like the telepathy end of it. Like it has to be staring right at you to do it. But yeah, as I started to freak out on the inside, although I laid there perfectly still, this thing knew I was flipping out on the inside. I was getting scared, and it, it threw up a holographic image of my brother over the front of it. In order to, I believe, call my fear. And I've heard of this before one other time. I, I told this story to somebody, and they were like, wow, that has happened before. I remember, and they, and they, I heard a story about that exact same situation. And it didn't work. And I didn't say anything out loud. But I did say in my mind, you're not, you're not fooling me. You know, I was sort of swearing at it. You're not fooling me, you SOB. You're not fooling me. I know what you are. And that's when it said to me, go back to sleep. Or just first it said sleep. Just said the word sleep. And then after that, I, I just, it's a weird thing to try to explain. When you hear words in your head that are sent to you telepathically, you hear, you. I think you don't hear them. You feel the words, if that makes sense. You feel what you're supposed to be doing. You feel what you're told. In mm -hmm. other words, this thing told me, go back to sleep. I didn't hear the words, go back to sleep. I just knew what it wanted me to do. Yeah. I don't understand how to even explain that. Okay, so just a, let's recap what happened. Okay, so you're laying in, in bed at what time at night, would you say? I'd say about 2 o'clock in the morning. 2 o'clock in the morning. And you're laying on your side and you turn over onto your back. And that's when you notice this being standing to your right. I looked right. to my right. Yeah, I looked to my right with my eyes. And then it was just, but you got to realize, though, it, it was absolute paralysis. I couldn't move if I wanted to. Okay, so your body was I, locked up, but you could move your eyes. Right. Correct? All okay. I could move was my eyes. Mm -hmm. And that was it. And I couldn't take my eyes off this thing if I wanted to. I, I don't know why. Did time seem but, like it was uh, going faster, slower? Did you notice any strange sounds? I didn't know. I don't recall any sounds. And the weird thing is I don't recall any other presence in the room other than the singular one being. Mm -hmm. But the weird thing is, is as after, like I said, it just before it put that image of my brother over its own face, it sort of smiled at me but only with half of its face. It was more of like a smirk. Like, you know, I think it did that to try to calm me down because before the smirk, it looked so serious that it was horrifying because you're not used to that kind of thing at all. Who would be, right? Yeah, but and it had big it black smiled, eyes. I think. Is that what you said? Excuse me? Did it have big black eyes? Huge black eyes. Huge black eyes. It, that, that's the scariest thing. 
Mm. It's like looking at a giant hornet, you know? Yeah, and it's smiling at you. Can you can imagine. It's uh, like your eyes are as big as your fist, except they're, you know, obviously, uh, you know, oval is shape, sort of, you know, they go to wrap around their head kind of thing. Yeah. And at this oh, point, Lord. it's smiling at you, and what happens next? That's when I started to hear it telling me to go back to sleep. Mm-hmm. And, and it, I don't understand why I even listened, but I did. Okay. I didn't even question it. It just said sleep, and then it said go to sleep. And I rolled back over on my left side, faced the wall, exactly what it wanted me to do. And I don't know what happened after that. Man, that's I creepy. I don't know what happened after that. So you're but telling me, say, um, like, somebody, like, let's say you're a kid and your mom is checking on you late at night to see if you're okay. That could possibly be an alien and not your actual mother or whatever family member. It's kind of freaky to think it's about. It's very possible. It's very possible. Because if they have the ability to project, and I'm, again, I've heard this before. I can't, offhand, I can't remember. I've, I've talked about this before with somebody online. And they had, they had spoken back about how they had gotten this story before from someone else. And, uh, yeah, it's very possible. And, uh, you know, at 2 in the morning, you know, you're in a deep sleep. You're very vulnerable. Very vulnerable. And I don't care who's listening as far as things go. Like, whether they believe me or not, that's up to them. All I know is I'm not going to waste my time telling this story unless it was 100% true. It is what it is. Hopefully someone out there, hopefully not actually, that someone can relate. I wouldn't want no one to go through this kind of thing. But the problem is, is since that time, every three to five years, I have some sort of an encounter. And it's always with someone else, too. Not just when I'm alone. I could give you some serious examples, you know. Okay. But I had, uh, on and off, like I said, throughout my childhood, at that time I was about 14, something like that, yeah. But time goes on, I go in the military, I get out, and all of a sudden I'm still seeing these things. Just haphazardly, always... It's always the last thing on your mind, always, and they just hit you like, like boom in your face. Anyway, uh, I'll give you an example. I'm driving through Pennsylvania. This is about, I'd say, twelve years ago, somewhere in that range, around the time I saw that Sasquatch in Lisbon. Anyway, yeah, my wife and I, her family's from Canton, Ohio, and. Uh, We'd go out twice a year or so. And this one particular time, this was right around the same time we saw that Bigfoot thing in, in Lisbon. But we were coming through Canton. It, we left we left Ohio around midnight. So 11 o'clock, actually, around 11 o'clock at night. Because we were cruising through Pennsylvania, and we were in the middle of nowhere. And the weirdest thing is, is in Pennsylvania, and I think it was Route 80 or 81, one or the other. Something, yeah, 80, 81. I can't remember. It goes east to west, right, straight through. It's like six hours driving through PA. Anyway, it was around 1.30 in the morning. It had been raining like hell. And uh, it stopped raining. And I said to my wife, don't you think it's kind of strange we haven't passed any cars? Not even an 18-wheeler. And usually at that time of night in Pennsylvania, 18-wheelers are barreling through because that's when they can make the most progress, you know, and they, no cars in the way. A lot of 18-wheelers travel at night. Anyway, it had just stopped raining. We're going through this valley in Pennsylvania, if anybody knows. You know, you can look off left and right, and a lot of times you're in the middle of the highway. You can see forever. You, you'll see like these steel towns and stuff like that. But we were in an area where there wasn't any real, any civilization at all. However, it did level where to the left and the right. We come around this huge bend in the highway. And again, it's 1.30, just stopped raining. And you could see left, right forever. But as we came around this bend, I was swearing my mother's grave, dude. This UFO was landed right in the middle of the highway. And I will tell you right now, I will swear till the day I die, 
it was incredible. I got my wife. I got my kids in the back seat. My daughter at the time was just about going into college. She was probably about 17, 18. My son was early teens, 13-ish or something like that. And they were passed out in the back seat. And I, we see this UFO. And I'm, I mean, we were literally, Miguel, we were on top of this thing. We come around the corner. It was right there. Boom. But the weirdest thing was I reach back and I'm trying to swat my kids. I'm slapping them on the legs as hard as I can, trying them in the back seat. Get up, get up, get up. And they did not move. It was as if they were dead. Did not move. And uh, I found that strange. But instantly, this all happened in a matter of seconds. Now, I turn back around, look at the windshield. My wife, same thing as when we saw that Sasquatch. She's leaning forward. She's saying, holy shit. And I'm thinking the exact same thing. I'm like, you're seeing this? Are you seeing this? And she says, oh. "She." next thing you know, it was absolute paralysis. I come to a stop, I would say, 20 feet from this craft, dude. It was shaped like a Big Mac. Out of my, I could not move again. Just same thing as with the alien. I could not move anything but my eyes. It was absolute paralysis. And to my left, though, as I looked to my left, best I could out of my peripheral, I could see four or five, I guess I would say five people in jumpsuits. It was dark, but they were gray jumpsuits. I don't care what people think. This is a true story. And I know they were gray. There's nothing else to describe them as. They were little grays in the road. And this thing, honestly, Miguel, I'm going to tell you right now, this craft was so unbelievably, um, it was just unbelievable. Honestly, it was shaped like a Big Mac. And I'm an aircraft mechanic, dude. Uh, I was in the military as well. No longer, but I used to be. And let me tell you, they don't put square windows in planes because they will blow right out. That's why planes have round windows. It's just the way it is. But this thing had square windows. It was so big, it hung over each side of the highway. The windows had to be four feet by four feet. And across the bottom level, it had to be at least 20 windows. That's how big it was. And then the next level above that, it was a double decker. It looked like a Big Mac. It had the same amount of windows. You could see right inside the craft. It had a pink glowing light. I can't even describe it. Call it a peach. If you had a light bulb that was peach colored, call it that then. It was like this peach colored light. It was unbelievable. It was beautiful. And I'm looking through each window. But we've got to realize now, this thing is above us because it's so big. It made the car look so puny. And I was in a, uh, what did my wife have at the time? She had one of those little, it was like a truck with like a four foot bed. I forgot what they even, of course, it was so long ago when I bought it, I forgot. It had a little, whatever, it had a little four foot bed, double cab thing. Anyway, we're looking up at this thing more or less and uh, looking inside the craft. And I'm trying to spot, I'll never forget it. I was trying to look for people, you know, but I think most of the people, whoever was in that craft was outside, outside the craft on the road. That's what I was seeing on my peripheral. What the hell they were doing in the road, I don't know, but I will say this. It's as if they didn't care. They didn't care, like, what was going to come around the bend, as if they almost controlled the traffic. I almost, I said to my wife before we saw this thing, why haven't we seen any cars? I couldn't believe it. We couldn't see, like, I don't give a crap where you're at, you know, in this country. You drive down the highway for hours and hours, you're going to pass somebody eventually. And we hadn't passed nothing in hours. And I had been that route so many times. I've never had that happen. I've been that route 50 times across Pennsylvania. I'd never had that happen. Anyway, this thing's in the road. Next thing you know, like I said, though, and I can still remember the landing gear. It had, like, struts coming down with, like, these feet attached to, like, these struts. Looking up at this thing, I, I know this sounds ridiculous. I know this sounds ridiculous, but it was white. This craft was white. And the top end of it had this red stripe painted across. 
And I know that sounds ridiculous because everybody's always thinking, oh, you know, the gray silver dead. No, no, not at all. Not this thing. Not this thing. And it was huge. It could have held 100 people comfortably without a doubt. It was, I would consider basically like a mothership almost. That's how big it was. It looked like something off Steven Spielberg movie. It was, it had components outside of this thing. I don't even know how to describe it. They were like boxes attached to boxes, attached to like hoses that injected into this thing. It was ridiculous to look at. It was, you couldn't even understand. It looked like, it looked like an, a 10 year old kid took a bunch of cardboard and toilet paper rolls and construction paper and, and just started gluing everything together, except call it high tech. It was like you couldn't make rhyme or reason. What is this for? What is that for? These things, this thing, it was out of control. The, the, the amount of technology, there's no way on earth that that was ours. There's no damn way at all. And again, out of my peripheral, my wife was paralyzed. I'm paralyzed. We couldn't talk, but we could see. And then here's the kicker, man. What happens? All of a sudden, we black out. Then what happens? We wake up five miles down the road on an exit, passed out. We come to. And then we both started basically stirring at the same time. My kids are still out like a light. But I will tell you this. I'm, I'm like, Karen, man, what in the hell just happened? You know, it, and I started, we started talking like, was that real? Did that just happen? Like, and we're describing it back and forth, like, just confirm, like, we're not crazy. Are we losing our effing minds? My kids, I finally slapped them around and not, you know what I mean? Anyway, I wake them up, I should say, and I slap them around. <laughs> but I get my kids stirred. They come too. They don't remember nothing. But my wife, she starts describing the exact, the, the entire scenario. She starts running through it. I'm like, oh, my God, it did happen. I know it did happen. We were only we had been on the road a few for a few hours at the time. So we were about halfway through Pennsylvania, somewhere in that range. Uh takes a little bit to get out of Ohio from Canton, so we go into Dayton or Akron rather, and then into Ohio. I mean go from Ohio, go through Akron and then into Pennsylvania, I mean. And uh, so we had been in, you know, we were a couple hours deep into Pennsylvania at least. And uh, yeah, uh, we woke up inside of the damn highway. I, I was scared. I was shaking. I just knew. I just knew. And I pulled into a damn, gar uh, I pulled into a, a, I'm nervous telling the story. I pulled into a gas station. And I'm talking to this kid. It's like now it, it's like three o'clock in the morning. Whatever the hell. It's late. And uh I'm saying to this kid, you ever seen anything weird around here or anything weird ever? You know, and he's like, Well, there's a military base about twenty miles down the road. I'm like, no, 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 never mind. This ain't no military. I I am ex military. And let me tell you, I'm not saying I know everything the government has, but I know well, uh, you know, I, I, I do my homework, dude. There's no way the United States government or any government on the planet has that kind of capability. There's no way. We might have UFOs, but they're not going to be landing in the highway in Pennsylvania. They have plenty of uh, private space out in the deserts of Nevada and all these other places around the world where they don't need to be involved landing on highways where the public can see them. I'm sure the government has UFOs. I'm sure they've had them for probably 50 years. Back engineered a lot of crap, but this wasn't one of them. This thing was white, though. It was shaped like a Big Mac. I would say, I don't know, at least 40 windows. The weird thing, though, is the windows were square. And this happened, like I say, 10, 12 years ago. 12 years ago. I'm still scratching my head trying to figure out about the square windows. You could see right inside the craft, too. I was so dying to like, I was hoping to. I'll never forget, I was hoping to see, like, a being look out the window, you know, like, at us, to confirm, like, holy 
effing crap, this is real. Even though I don't need it, you know, I just, for whatever reason, I can recall looking through the windows, scanning left to right, because I couldn't move just my eyeballs. I, I wanted to see something out the window. I don't know why. But anyway. Could you see did. any um, writing on the craft? No, not at all. But I'll never forget, there were components on top of components, which is doesn't make much sense to me, you know? I've you know I've studied this kind of thing over the years because when things happen to you, at least the the average person will look into it, and you know at least something happens to me, I'm going to look into it and try to find out more about it. You know, and I've I've always looked into UFOs long before this happened, just because I've had too many experiences. I want answers. I've never heard of anything, any description of anything like I've seen, like I like I saw that night in Pennsylvania. I never heard of a double decker. Oh, I've never heard of the square windows. I've never heard of things attached to it, like on the outside of it. It didn't make any sense to me. It was not, it was aerodynamic, except for the fact of all this crap that was attached to it. It didn't make any sense to me. It still doesn't make any sense. I scoured the internet years later and uh, looking for any kind of description that was similar. I've been on MUFON. I've looked state to state. Different, nothing, nothing even close. So, you know, I obviously, everybody and their uncle should know by now. There's many kinds, there's many races, just like there are here on Earth. Where are they coming from? Who the hell knows? But I know one thing, they're here, dude. They are here and they've been here. They've been here forever. Long before I think even us, maybe. But they think, watch uh, us. Do you think possibly you guys were abducted that night? I know for a fact we were because it was over. I meant to say that it was an hour and a half. When we woke up on the side of that highway five miles away, hour and a half went by. Hour and a half went by. That's what freaked me out. I meant to even, I forgot to even tell you that. And that's why I stormed into that convenience store and a gas station in the middle of nowhere. <coughs> Excuse me, flipping out. Like, have you ever seen it? We're, yeah, because I couldn't believe that hour and a half went by. And I'm like, well, you know what? You know, if it was just like, honestly, if it was just me, I would have probably had myself uh, hospitalized, honestly, if it was just me. But, I mean, this was my whole family, my wife. Even to this day, I'll bring it up every once in a while. Like, Karen, that did happen, right? And she's like, ever. I've seen more weird since I've been with you than I can even want to even remember. Because, just because, I don't know why, you know? Whether it be the ghosts, UFOs, this Sasquatch thing. It's like, hello. After a while, you get kind of sick of it. Because it's not like you're looking for it. Who the hell would want to look for it, you know? But it's real. It is real. And I do believe 100% that these Sasquatch, for whatever reason, are directly affiliated with UFOs. I have my reasons. I mean, there's no real point in getting into it. But I've heard stories over the years from various people. You know, and, uh, you know, people that have said UFO sightings, you know, I've heard one recently, uh, I think it was uh, Steve Isdall there on How to Hunt, talking about, you know, an elk getting sucked up by one, and that kind of thing, so, yeah, there's a lot of reports of uh, people seeing some really weird, weird stuff out there, and I feel sorry for people that don't believe, I really do, I really do, because, you know, I... Maybe they're better off. I guess if that's their safe zone, that so be it. My father, he lives in North Stones in Connecticut, and uh, he's in the woods, dude. He's in the woods, and he has a like a modular home or whatever they call it, middle of nowhere, cornfields surrounding him. I mean, it's isolated. And he said one night he called me up. He had something staring in his. He had the door open, but the storm door was obviously. You had the storm door there, but the front, the door, the main door of the house was open. So he had just the storm door. And he has a mirror in front of his chair. So he's looking in the mirror back behind himself. And he said there was something staring at him with huge red eyeballs. And it scared the living hell out of him. <laughs> so <laughs> he scared the hell out of him. So bad he got up and ran into the bedroom, he said, and didn't come out. And didn't even bother shutting the door. That's how scared he was. 
Yeah, he saw something, like I said, staring at him. You know, he would be seven feet tall, he says. Just staring down at him, looking right through that door at him. So, yeah, I believe that. Uh, another thing, too, is I've seen a lot of shadow people on his property. It's old Indian land. It's Pequot Indian land. Yeah, let's talk and, uh, about those encounters if you would like to talk about it. Well, one night, well, I'll tell you what, while I'm thinking about it, I got out of his I got out of my truck one night. I pulled into his property. It was like 10 o'clock at night. And uh, I shut the door. I look over, and there's a big old hickory nut. I mean, hickory tree, hickory trees. And right beyond that is cornfield. There's a stone wall. And uh, sure as hell, I look, I see this shadow person peeking behind this tree at me. It's darker than dark, dude. I mean, if you close your eyes, put out the lights, Double that. That's how dark these things are. They're so dark, they don't even make that color. I don't know how they pull it off. But I'll tell you what. I looked at this thing, and my stepbrother, he's told me for years about them the land being haunted. I don't even know why. He's never given me any details, but he just says, oh, there's a lot of spirits around here, a lot of spirits around here. And uh, I believe it. You know, there's no reason not to believe it. I'm surrounded by Indian in the land, you know. Anyway, uh, yeah, I saw that shadow dude. He was looking across. He come put his head out from behind that tree. You could see its hands, arms, forearms, and then its head. No features. Faceless. But it looked right at me, and I said right out loud, I see you, you SOB. I can F and see you. And it darted back behind that tree. And I never saw it again. But I was in the house, you know, I had been there because my father had medical conditions. He's like 80 years old right now. So, you know, it was like 75 years old. So it took five years ago. I might have to stay over there for a day or two, keep track of him or whatever, you know. And uh, you'd be in the house. You'll feel stuff on you. I see things, you know, you'll hear things. His house is haunted as hell. He don't even know it. Because he's too old. He's too old to recognize it. But you'd be laying there at 2.30 in the morning. And you feel something just graze their fingers across your toes or something while you're laying there. You're not going to deny it, uh, you know, or you just have the overwhelming feeling like you're being suffocated. Like you cannot breathe, you know, and you see this dark thing just dart out of your peripheral. You know you're being played with by something not pretty, something unknown. So, you know, and I've had that. I've dealt with it just like I've dealt with the UFOs. I've dealt with the uh the ghost phenomenon for 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 many many years i even have a book written out there about me not, not the whole book but a chapter in the book it's ghost of new england put out by david pitkin that was about 10 years ago he's now deceased but he put out about nine or ten books he was a very well-known author he came down from westchester new york interviewed me and uh this guy knew his business i consider him like psychic if I could tell you, I'll tell you the stories about the paranormal. They're 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 horrifying, but yet at the same time, there's just you either it's a thirst that you can't quench. Let's just put it that way. There are some people that will run from it, and uh, there's people that will run towards it. I used to be the one that would run towards it. Now I'm sort of in the middle. I won't go left or right. I'm not running at it. I'm not running towards it or from it. I just, I guess it brought me closer to, I wouldn't call it religion, but I would call it faith. Because I guess some would call it like being scared straight. Because I've always questioned God when I was in my early 20s. My life was going great. I'm making big money. I thought Everett was in control of all of it. Until I sort of like, for lack of better words, got slapped right in the face by God himself. And it was a weird, weird uh, experience where all of a sudden I'm questioning God, man. I'm questioning God. I'm early married. Kids are young. And uh, I thought Everett was running the show. And boy, did I find out the hard way that I'm running the show all right, but under someone else's direction. And uh, yeah, and from that just stemmed all sorts of crazy paranormal experiences 
the UFOs that kept going on and on. It was it was absolutely insane. Matter of fact, it wasn't even only three years ago. I was out in the yard with my neighbor and a uh, good friend. My neighbor's my uh, landlord at the time. I was renting the house off. Uh, this guy it was his sister. She lived up the road. We call it the farm. It was a private road. And I was telling her about the UFO things. And all of a sudden, is there like one in the afternoon on a beautiful, bright summer day, right over our heads goes this huge ass tic tac looking thing they call tic tacs. It was exactly like a tic tac, except it was going about half the speed of a jet or a regular plane. And it was about half the height. I'm like, see what I mean? Look at that thing. And it was leaving like a fishtail behind it. And I had just been talking about UFOs, and there's this thing goes right over our heads. It's like, there it is. And, you know, if she was on the phone now, she'd tell you. Yeah, it's just one thing after another. Well, I'll tell you, it's just, if you have an open mind, these things are dying to excite you. I believe that firmly. They want to be known. But it's not going to show itself to an, uh, someone completely shut off these things. I don't care if you're talking about Sasquatch or any of the paranormal type of things like these rape creatures. I don't know what they are, but I'd like to know. I've never seen one. And I don't want to see one. I've never seen a dog man. Don't want to see one. These things horrify the hell out of me, but they're manifesting from somewhere. They are coming from somewhere. I don't know where. Honestly, I think some sort of, I mean, why now? I didn't hear about this stuff in 1980. I didn't hear about none of it, none of it, internet or no internet. Why now? It seems to me doors have been opened somehow, some way, and things are coming through. Like, the, I don't mean to get all biblical, but the Bible does talk about it. You're going to see things that are beyond disgusting and beyond belief, beyond words. It states it right there, point blank in the Bible. That in the end times, you're going to see things that are going to blow your mind. And we are witnessing it at this point in time. We are witnessing it now. You can't deny it. I mean, come on, you're not the only channel. You know, there are thousands and thousands and thousands of testimonies every day being put out about people seeing this, that, and the other thing. No one's going to tell me all these people are liars or they're just uh, easily manipulated or whatever the hell. Not happening. Not happening at all. No more than it is me going to call and talk to you and fill your ear with a bunch of crap. It's not happening. It is what it is. People are afraid of it. I don't blame them. They ought to be afraid of it. They ought to be afraid of it. Because it's only going to get worse, in my opinion. It's only going to get worse. And I'll tell you right now, today's electronics have the ability to capture things that have always been right there in front of our face. I don't know why, but these electronics we buy today have a way to open doors. They can see through the matrix, man. They can see right through it, and they're picking up things. I got pictures of myself on a cruise with orbs around me where you can clearly see people's faces inside the orbs. Very clear. I didn't even notice it until I was on a cruise with my wife and uh, her cousin and her husband. And I got a call from Sue, the, the, the cousin, saying, oh, my God, she sent me a picture from her digital camera from Ohio. And uh, she's like, Everett, check this picture out. And it was sure as hell, there it is. I'm standing there. It was like formal night. So I got like this, not a tuxedo, but a suit on or whatever the hell. And uh, right there is this orb right in front of my chest about the size of a soccer ball. And then. Inside that orb, you can clearly see a woman's face. Clearly as hell. You can't deny it. It's not uh, pareidolia or whatever they call that. Not even close. A five-year-old will tell you, yep, there it is. I can see it clear as hell. It is what it is. Why now? I don't know. Why these electronics can pick up on it now? I don't know that either. But I know they do. It's incredible what's going on. People need to... I, I I really, I warn people, like, wake up, man. Wake up now. There's things that have gone on. I could, I'm sure I'm forgetting a thousand different things I could tell you. But I'll tell you right now, back to that Sasquatch thing, Miguel. 
I will say, this thing wanted to be seen. And it must continue to want to be seen because it's been reported again since, uh, I'm not even counting the people that haven't reported it that I don't know about. But all I know about is the actual reports. I know three of them. And I ran into this guy, the one who brought me the paper uh, two days later showing me, oh, if anybody had seen this big book, please call this number. The one who brought that in, I saw him not even three years ago at a store in Lisbon, the same town. I had stopped in that town with my son off the highway. And he was in the store. He's like, ever? I worked with this guy for years. I didn't recognize him because he had, you know, retired and gained a lot of weight. And I was like, Bill, holy mackerel. He's like, yeah. He's like, hey, remember that time you told me about that thing you saw on the side of the railroad tracks? I'm like, yeah. He goes, that was just sighted again, you know. I was like, really? That was only three years ago. So I know this thing's back and forth, back and forth, man. So, yeah, I don't like it. I don't like not the Bigfoot thing, but like all this paranormal kind of thing. I don't look for it at all. It just seems to find me. And I'm now I'm not the only one. I know I'm not the only one. There's certain people, I think, that are open minded, which I am. I'm not saying I believe everything. But I believe a lot more than most people because I have reason to believe. And uh yeah. I know exactly what I've seen. And uh you know, you'd have to be a nutcase. And actually, people that are crazy, they don't go on the telephone onto a podcast or whatever and talk. And I mean, most people that are crazy are just that. They'll be in a corner sitting in a chair, rocking back and forth and being crazy. They're not going to get online and tell about it. That's not what crazy people do. So that's why I have a tendency. I'm not saying I believe everybody, but I've, I'd be hard pressed to think of one person I've heard that I could say is full of crap listening to testimonies whether it be your channel or anybody else's channel i really do i don't i don't most people are desperate for answers that's why they do get online i'm not desperate for answers because i know no one has the answers for me so but i am you know it's nice to know that you're not alone and that's what this is all about that's what makes the internet so good i mean it can be good it can be bad but when it comes to like connecting the dots, and then I'll tell my story, you tell yours. Hopefully, over time, you know, there's a lot of holes that have been filled because of the internet, with channels like yours, for instance. You know, it takes a little bit of time, but over the course of a few years or whatever, you slowly, slowly start to develop. Like people say to me, or people say in general, that, oh, they're paranormal. There's nothing paranormal about Sasquatch. Let me tell you something. You got to be nuts not to think that, to think that, because there's been too many people that have seen these things do the incredible or the unbelievable, like the one I saw. This thing looked like it took a side step, like you would in a military in formation. It just took a step, took a step, and it literally looked like it disappeared into thin air. Where the hell did it go? I don't know, but it didn't walk. It didn't run through the woods. All I know is. When I say it disappeared right in front of my eyes, that's exactly what it did. That's exactly what it did. That's why my wife was screaming bloody murder, man. And when I turned towards it, she was screaming and pounding on my shoulder. Ah, get that F on him. What are you doing here? She was going ballistic. And I, you know, Everett, his inquis- my inquisitive mind, I go, I try to drive right at it. Why? I wanted to know where the hell it went. Like, did it go into the woods? I mean, there was nowhere for it to go. It could not have went into the woods because I had my headlights on it the entire time. It disappeared into the thin air. I don't give a shit what anybody says. I don't care who calls me crazy. I don't care. I'm not here to make friends. I'm here to tell truth. This thing has abilities. It didn't cloak itself. It didn't blend in. No. This thing literally went from physical to invisible. That's what happened. And, you know, I'll tell you right now, I'm supposed to go back in that area because, again, I told you about uh, Norma and her husband, Bill. And uh, we had gone out and I told you about the rocks clacking in the woods and all that. 
they want to go to that spot again. I'm kind of afraid to be honest with you. I'm afraid to see what might, might happen. But I'll guarantee you right now, if somebody put a trail cam on one of those telephone poles and pointed it straight down that road, I'll guarantee you they'd find one. Matter of fact, I, I, I might do that myself. I ain't been over that way in about, well, it's been many years. But uh, I'm breathing heavy just telling you. No, you're fine. But, uh, yeah, um, you know, I just, I'll tell you right now, that thing, it's there, and it's there all the time. Yeah, so I after you've seen the tracks. eyes, you um, you experience some activity, the rock clacking. I know you mentioned that earlier. Did anything else happen? No, you could hear, you, all we could hear was noises in the woods, and it was so weird because I'm in my car there and there's, and we have these, uh, these uh, microphone things, super sensitive, I don't know what they call them, K2s, H2s, whatever they call them. Anyway, you got to hang them out the window and stuff. And it was, yeah, it was incredible. But they had said, though, they've had rocks thrown at the car. You know, they've had all sorts of craziness happen up there. And I'll tell you right now, but when you pull in there, and all of a sudden, there's not a house around. You know, you're in the middle of nowhere in the woods. And like this dirt road, it must have been five miles long, at least. And it's like you get to the end where they park and it's like it's private land on a lake. But, you know, and it's one o'clock in the morning and you hear crack, crack, crack. I mean, what in the hell is smacking rocks together? There's nothing out there. There ain't a town around for miles and miles and miles. There's nothing around. What's smacking rocks together? Ain't no raccoons out there. Banging rocks together. I mean, you know, it was so definitive. Like, like you could tell they weren't pebbles they were smacking together. These things were rocks. And it was so clear. And it was so it, it seemed so close. And the thing is, too, is you can distinguish between other animals. You know, and I could hear other animals were walking around. You know, that you know, it could be a coyote or something running through the woods, but you know, when you start hearing those rocks banging against each other. You know something's going on, and it ain't an animal. It ain't an animal. These things are everywhere. They are everywhere, especially, like I say, up my old man's way up in uh, North Stonington. There's nothing out there, at least on the, his property. It's, you know, It's on Ryder Road, my father's land, and my father's wife, her maiden name's Ryder. That farm, that whole road was given as a wedding present in the 1850s. So there's not a house on that road. And, uh, you know, if, if there's anything going to be around, that would be the place. There's cornfields, there's deer, there's streams. Anything you want, it's there from crayfish to anything. Anything you want, it's there. You can live, you can live good. Even a human, you, uh, you and I, we wouldn't have to, you know, you got hickory, nuts, you name it, it's there. You can live pretty well if you know what the hell you're looking for. No doubt about it. I I will say, I'll email you, though. I think of some other stuff. I know I have offhand. I didn't expect you to call me this morning, but yeah, uh, this afternoon, rather. But, yeah, I'll tell you right now. I just want everybody listening, if anybody does hear, just to believe. There's so many naysayers out there that are so quick to call people crazy. And it's like, listen, if you look up marsupial sightings in this country, marsupial meaning like a, a kangaroo and that kind of thing look up that just look up that on the internet and tell me everybody's crazy uh, i don't know how many states alone you google marsupial sightings in the united states how many states will pop up with sightings again and the thing is is this when i went that ufo sighting in pennsylvania now that was when the internet was pretty early fairly early but I did Google that shit when I got home. And it, Pennsylvania was the number one reported state. It, it, was, it had the highest reported sightings of UFOs that year, Pennsylvania. And there's a lot of strange things. They've got, you know, they've got hidden military bases and PA. A lot of weird stuff. It's going on forever. Forever and ever. So, you know, I know what I saw. That's all I can tell you. 
Yeah, well, I appreciate you for sharing all that, and I definitely believe you. And a lot of the things you mentioned I've experienced in my life as far as, like, the glowing eyes, um, the alien next to the bed, and the paranormal activity. I've seen a shadow person as well. So I definitely... I've, dealt, I've dealt with the ghost thing for years and years, dude. I'm so used to it. It doesn't even bother me anymore. Honestly, I get poked on the side while I'm laying there, and it's just like, I'm going to bed, dude. Leave me alone. That's how you get numb to it after a while. Yeah. And how does after, it make you... Know, you after the fear... How, how yeah. does that make you feel knowing that there's many people out there that haven't had Bigfoot, cryptid, or paranormal experiences, and then... Frustrated. You absolutely have frustrated. had all three, and you've had I, multiple... I, I, it absolutely frustrates the living hell out of me. Because I've had my own family. Mm -hmm. I've had my own family turn on me, call me crazy, this, that, and the other thing. And I say, you know what? Why am I crazy about one subject? Well, when it comes to, like, stocks, buying stocks and building houses or repairing a furnace or something, why am I not crazy every other with every other subject? If you're crazy, you're crazy. You're not crazy with just, oh, when it comes to UFOs, Everett's crazy. Or when it comes to... uh Bigfoot, Everett's crazy. Why am I not crazy the rest of the day? You know what I mean? I'm crazy when it comes to crap you don't want to hear about. That's when I'm crazy. That's when I'm crazy. Is when you're afraid to hear what I have to say. Next thing you know, you just want to label me a nutcase. Everett's nuts. Oh, he must need some sleep. What are you out of your mind? Why would I go out of my way and tell somebody like my own family member, for instance, a story, like I said to them, what do you think? I'm trying to make friends with your ass. I don't care what you think. I'm just telling you the news. Take it with you or not. I don't care what you believe. I'm just telling you like it is. My son, he's 25 years old, just got out of the Marines. He knows exactly what's going on. He knows exactly what's going on. He was out there that night on the deck when I had those UFOs fly overhead when I was playing with that flashlight. The only reason I did that is because I watched Steve Greer and all these morons with their lasers pointing at the sky out there at Mount Adams and that kind of thing. And I figured, you know what? I'm going to give it a try. I know this thing can be spotted from an aircraft. So I just figured, well, just for shits and giggles, I'm going to give it a try. And it didn't take but three to four minutes. And well, not just one, but two of them shot over my head. They were no more than 500 feet over my head, Miguel. They were glowing from the internally. They were glowing internally. You couldn't see anything but a glow. But if you had a giant Mentos candy, I would say that there were five feet over, 500 feet over my head. I would guess that they had to be 200 feet across each one. And it just went, zhoo, stopped for a millisecond and then shot away. Enough for me to realize, yes, this is happening. I'm talking a millisecond. And then another one, boom, same exact thing, shot away. And when it shot away, it was, if you blinked, you would have missed it. And I'm going to tell you right now, that scared the living hell out of me. And I've had a lot of experiences with UFOs and all that over the years. But that particular instance, it scared me big time, dude. I bent over and ran through that screen door back through my storm. I had like a sliding door off the deck. I ran through that back into that house like a, like a five-year-old schoolgirl. I was scared. I was scared because I was like, I didn't expect it to happen, for one thing. But when it did, it didn't happen just once. It happened twice. Within seconds, I'd say about four seconds apart, five seconds apart, and then the second one came in. Dude, I tell you what, my son, he was like, wow, you know, because he never, he never experienced this kind of thing. You know, he was with me in Pennsylvania, but he was passed out in that back seat. And I think for whatever reason, they had control over those kids because I was slapping them on the legs. You know, they wouldn't wake up for nothing. And I just couldn't, you know, next thing you know, absolute paralysis, you know, I was like, wow. But I've dealt with, I've dealt with, uh, what do they call that? Sleep paralysis? That ain't just, people, people are so misinformed about that kind of thing. They say, oh, you're going to wake up, you're waking up out of a dream state, and your motor skills aren't, bull crap. I've had that happen when I was wide awake. I've had experience, too. I was living in Mystic, Connecticut, dude. Uh, I was shacking up. I had two roommates with this house. I just got out of the Army. 
and uh, I, was, I used to read a lot back then. I was reading a book. It was 12 o'clock at night. I'll never forget it. I looked at the alarm clock right next to my head, and all of a sudden, I was paralyzed out of nowhere, just paralysis. And I could hear, sounded like a mile away, like a swarm of bees. And it got closer, and the sound kept coming closer and closer and closer until it was engulfed, right? It only seemed to last seconds. And then when I turned again and looked at that clock after I, I broke out of this paralysis, when I looked back at that clock, it was 1220. 20 minutes passed, and it seemed less than 20 seconds. I've never explained that situation either. Never have. That freaked me the hell out. But I don't know. I didn't see nothing. I don't know. I think that was like, I don't know. I think that was UFO related. If you wanted to, if I want to give out my honest opinion, I think it had something to do with UFOs. At that time, there was a lot of things going on, UFO related. And just, I, I can't say either here or there what the actual explanation was. But all I know is I lost 20 minutes of time for no reason. I was laying there reading. All of a sudden, boom, paralysis, and then I'm not paralyzed, and 20 minutes gone by. Same when I saw that gray at 14 in my room. That was, you know, absolute paralysis, dude. You can't, you just, you just can't move. And it's like they got you, and there's nothing you're gonna do about it. I could tell you stories though about the, I'll tell you about the ghost things. I mean, we'd go on for hours and hours though, but. That house I owned in Norwich, bro, in Norwich, Connecticut. That's an old Indian town. Norwich is a very old, very old city. And Norwich, downtown Norwich, used to be like second largest shipping area aside from New York City back in the 1600s, 1700s. A lot of old Indian graveyards and all that stuff. And my neighborhood where I lived was nothing but Indian ground in the summertime for the, uh, for the uh, Mohegan Indians. And, uh, and Pequot's not down, not far from that. And uh, that house, when I moved in there, that thing was, it was beyond haunted. It was the most unbelievable thing ever. And uh, that's why that guy came down from New York. I was in there after I closed on that house, second day, just like the typical ghost story. What did I do? The house was built in 1960. It was a four-bedroom cape. And I went in after the closing, the second day after closing, I started gutting the upstairs. Kids are at school, wife's wherever, I'm at home alone. And I hear, boom, I hear the front door open and I heard the front door close. And I'm thinking, hmm, that's weird. And I hear thump, 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 um, something's coming up the stairs. I'm like, listen, my wife, we both had motorcycles at the time, but she's not a big woman. Whatever's coming up those stairs sounds awful big, you know. And uh, I had my back to the door. I'm in one of the bedrooms. I had it gutted. I got a mitosaur on the ground. I'm reframing some some uh, knee walls and putting in new electrical. And uh, I something walked across the floor behind me. And I'm assuming it's my wife. I figured she's gotten home early. And all of a sudden, I could feel it right over my left shoulder, even the breath. And I went to turn, thinking my wife is literally inches from my face. And I was going to say, oh, you're back already? And as I turned my head, there was nothing there. I literally fell backwards on the ground. I fell backwards on the ground, and I knew instantly I just dealt with a ghost. I heard the front door open. I heard it come up the stairs. I heard it walk across the damn room I'm in. I had, it, I had the room gutted. Everything was so echoey. Everything echoed. So when it came across the plywood floor, it was like thump, 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 like boots. And I'm going to tell you right now, what did I hear as I turned and I looked to my left thinking it was my wife? I hear, what the F is going on here? And it said it, you know what I mean? And it was a dark, deep voice. Scared the living shit out of me. I, I dropped everything. Went down the stairs, lit a cigarette. Now there was a styrofoam cup half full of water. And I had the living room floor. And I had a stack of two by fours in the middle of the living room floor. I had just moved in, you know, or we were moving in. And uh, 
I'm hyping on that cigarette. I'm so scared. You could hear the cigarette crackling. That's how hard I was hitting on it. And I couldn't believe what was going on. And I went back to the edge of the stairs and I looked up. I said, I don't know who the F you are, but whatever you are, whoever you are, don't ever F with my kids. And honestly, dude, in the 10 years I lived there, nine years actually, I thought I could beat this thing. I almost died living there. But anyway, I looked up those stairs, told that thing just that. And not once when my kids were there did that thing ever cause any problems. My daughter would go to college. My son be at his friend's house or whatever. Oh, hell, would break loose. Second, someone, one of the kids come in the house. Everything settled down like nothing's going on. Everything's fine. So it was respectful in that in that aspect. But when it came to me, it 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 messed with me like you wouldn't believe. This thing would come up to you at night, slide its hand under your pillow, start like squeezing out the back of your head. It would grab your feet, send electrical shock through your feet. It was incredible. It was. It was. It. it... I went to Walmart. I bought an audio digital recorder, probably 35, 40 bucks. And I'll tell you, it was beyond super sensitive. These things would pick up anything. And the second I turned that thing on, it was the second like my world changed. I said, who are you? What do you want? And this guy came across that thing and he says, I asked, what's your name? He goes, Jackie. I said, Jackie? Well, who are you? What do you want? And anyway, he didn't say nothing, right? So I went next door and my neighbors were like 75 years old at the time. They bought the house next to mine originally in 1960. The whole neighborhood was built in 1960. They were originals. So I told them what was going on in the house. They didn't believe me. And I said, well, who's Jackie? And they said, holy sh. They looked at me like crazy. They were like, Jackie? How do you know about Jackie? I was like, well, that's the guy I'm talking about that haunting my house or whatever. And they were like, Jackie is John. John was the son. He died in Florida at 55 years old of cancer. But he was a hellion, and he was always in and out of jail. And his mother, they were a Greek family, and the mother was always saving his butt from the police and all that. So anyway, it, it was only a day or two later, you know, I'm on that thing. And uh, I want answers. I'm on the recorder and I'm like, I know you're here. I want to ask you some questions. And this dude, he didn't hesitate. He did not hesitate, Miguel. This guy's like, what, man? I'm like, what's your first name? And he's like, John. I mean, it's a raspy voice, though, that's answering. Very creepy. But you got to think, too, the guy died of lung cancer. So, I mean, the raspy voice, I don't know. Maybe it goes hand in hand. But I, he says, uh, John, I says, uh, I says, uh, why do you call yourself Jackie? He goes, Nick. I was like, wow. I said, well, where? Did, I says, uh, where did you die? And he says, Lord. I said, how old are you? He says, 55, in a whispery, raspy voice. He answered every question I asked. It went on for minutes, dude. And I'm thinking, I watch these ghost shows on TV and all this crap, and I'm thinking to myself, I got every one of these shows on the planet, like, licked. They don't have anything on what's going on right now in this house. This thing is answering every question I ask. To the point, it even, I know it's going to sound crazy, this thing, this guy followed me to work, and I could feel it. I could feel it. And I said to the kid, this was this kid, Nick. He was a younger kid in his 20s in that carpenter shop there. And I was telling him the story. He didn't believe me, and I brought in that recorder, and I says, I can prove it to you right now because I can tell you he's here right now. I can feel it. I don't know how I could feel it, but I could feel it. And he says, I pull out the recorder, and I says, listen, I need you to do me a favor. This guy, this kid behind me, he don't believe that you're here. He doesn't believe you're real. Can you just do me a favor and say his name? And sure as hell, Miguel, this guy says, I'll whisper it. Nicholas. 
just like that, as Nicholas. And I'll tell you right now, the kid behind me, 20-something years old, he almost dropped to the ground. He couldn't believe what was going on. Instantly, right after that happened, my boss walked in, this guy Chris. And he jumps out of that chair and he says to Chris, look at me, and this ever, I hadn't been there that long at the time. And when I, I just, this was in the beginning. I says, uh, he says, uh, this ever, man, he's like some sort of effing medium. Or, I'm like, I'm not no medium. I'm just telling you what's going on. You can take it or not. Believe it or not. And anyway, he, he made, he didn't make me, but he's asked me to play the recording back. So I played it back for my boss. And then I said to him out loud, I said, what's my boss's name? And I did it for shits and giggles. And he goes, Chris. And then my boss, Chris, says, put that effing thing away. That's all he said about that. But it went on and on. Now, I could talk to you for hours about that kind of thing because I had my sister was killed at five years old by a drunk driver. And I know to this day that she's around. I've got her on audio i've got her she's just around i don't know how to prove it to you but let's just put it this way and then i named after uh the name ever it comes from an uncle who died in 1939 at polio and uh i think him and her are basically my guardians if that sounds not too crazy because i've had them intervene where I'd be doing recording or something like that. I don't play with that recorder or none of that no more. This was several years back. I've since turned my back to it all because the more you open up to it, the worse it can become. And next thing you know, everybody in our uncle wants to come through and say their piece. And next thing you know, you're dealing with 10, 15 different individuals who are, might be pretending to be your loved one. And, you know, it can get out of hand. It can get very much out of hand real quick. I learned it the hard way, so I quit. And I, uh, but before I did, I had, uh, I believe what, what is like my sister who died at five years old. I believe it was her. And, uh, I have no other choice but to think it was my uncle because the only reason I believe that, unless they were, I've never had anything, they've always been like helpful. Let's just put it that way, warning me. They warned me. They warned me to get out of my house that I was in, telling me I was in danger. I finally did get rid of the house. But uh, you hear a little kid come over the over the recorder, you know, you know, it's like, you know, it gets in the range of a five-year-old girl. You know, it just makes perfect sense. But every time I went to ask the name, like, what's your name? There was always another teenage boy who did talk to me, but he would never give his name. And when I asked the girl her name, he you could literally, Miguel, hear him muffle her mouth. Like if he put her hand over her mouth and she was trying to talk, like woo, 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 that kind of sound. And she would, he would only allow her to talk in such a limited fashion. But I would ask questions, they would answer. And then at the end, I would I would say, thank you so much. You did not have to answer any of it. I appreciate it. And the guy would say, you're welcome, Everett. Like, as clear as I'm talking to you right now, you're welcome, Everett. And it's so, it, it just shifts your paradigm towards life. The problem is now is I walk around, I'm 55, dude, and I walk around now. I've dealt with so much paranormal. I know I can almost pull my hand out of my pocket and reach out and it would slap me five. That's it just it's just how it is. Some people, like I say, are just I don't know why. Some people just are just attracted to it or it's attracted to them. I don't know if it has something to do with your aura or your being, but how do they know? They somehow pick up on it. Yeah. And I'll yeah, tell you absolutely. right now. Yeah. I don't understand, like these Bigfoot, they know who they can trust in Sasquatch. They know who they can trust and who they can't trust. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I think it has something to do with your aura. You must give off certain colors or how else would they know, you know? Unless yeah. they can just tap into your mind. They're very well wonder. Could, yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And the thing is, I can go on and on for hours regarding the paranormal, man. There's not even enough time in the day. 
No, I understand. I'll tell you right now, you know, I, you know, uh, I, I just wanted to get the story out, especially people that like they hear about. Oh, you saw a Sasquatch in Connecticut? Yeah, you're a real moron. That's what you are. I'm like, listen, man, you don't get it, do you? You just don't get it. You ain't ready for it yet. Some people you're never going to explain anything to. It's just the way it is. Their mind's closed off to it, and that's just the way it is. Yeah. So I know I don't begrudge them. I just deal with it, you know. But yeah. It is what it is. I don't force anybody. You can believe me. I don't care if you believe me or not. That's just the way it is. I'm not I'm not here to just shove anything down anybody's throat. But I'm not the only one in Connecticut. People do their homework, man. This couple in uh, Litchfield County, this elderly couple, recorded this Sasquatch on their property, and it was it was creepy looking. It wasn't this huge Patterson Gimlin thing. It was a skinny, lanky, seven eight foot tall. Looked like it had two wrists. The hands way it walked. The hands were below the knees, and this thing had. It looked like it had a wrist, and then like two wrists. Like it bent a hand. It bent so abnormally. Anyway. Point is, is this thing was creepy. And I'm thinking, good Lord, I would never want to run out and run into this thing in the woods. I would drop dead. I would drop dead of a heart attack. Because you know it could rip your arms off and beat you to hell with it, with them. You know, yeah. it's just so horrifying. I get talking, it's like, you know, it's like, I can't, I don't know what to talk about first. But yeah, 100%, dude. Yeah. I enjoy your channel, dude. You're a great friend. Appreciate it. Absolutely, and I appreciate you very much. Anyway, yeah, I enjoy your content, man. I'm always trying to share it with everybody, man. It's the best channel out there, as far as that con topic's concerned. Well, I appreciate but, yeah, that. I appreciate you calling. Yeah, absolutely, and um, you take care, and um, we'll talk in the comments, my friend. Sounds good. Awesome, man. Have a good day. Yeah, you too. Take care. See you. Bye. All right, Everett, thank you very much for sharing your encounters and experiences. And yeah, I tend to agree. There seems to be some type of connection with UFOs, aliens, and the paranormal. But on the same note, Sasquatch is flesh and blood, and you can go out there and find physical evidence. But like I've mentioned before, the fact that nobody has a body presented to science yet and the mystery remains it's hard to really say what it's connected to but there's certainly something strange and supernatural going on that science just doesn't understand yet and um, hopefully somebody can provide the answers one day yeah I just hope we're all ready for it if you have a Sasquatch encounter that you would like to share openly on the channel please contact me at sasquatchtheory at outlook.com and if you guys enjoyed today's episode, please like and subscribe. Be sure to hit the bell notification to stay up to date with all my future videos. But that's all we have for today. I appreciate everyone for watching. Take care and be safe.